Apple unfortunately decided it will only support HDMI 2.0 with their M1 Mac Studio, which I have owned since last June. Luckily, because it also has four Thunderbolt ports, that problem becomes easily solvable. Let's talk about it. When Apple announced the first Mac Studio, I knew I had to get it. In fact, I submitted an order as soon as it was available here in Slovenia. I then had to wait a couple of months to actually receive it because A, it wasn't an off-the-shelf unit, I upgraded it to 64GB of RAM and a terabyte of storage just to make sure it'll last me for years to come, and B, it was in the middle of the worst chip shortage ever, which in itself wasn't the most pleasant experience, to say the least. You could say I'm somewhat of an Apple fanboy because I do think their gear gets out of my way when I need to get the work done, but one of their peripherals that just doesn't work for me are their monitors. Now don't get me wrong, I'd love to use an Apple display as my primary display, but I'm also a gamer, so I need something with at least 44 Hz. Well, truth be told, if Apple made a monitor with 120Hz refresh rate that would also support Nvidia's G-Sync, I'd totally get one. Maybe even two. Can you imagine a 5K OLED with 120Hz refresh rate and ProMotion that also works with gaming GPUs? Now that would be nice. Probably very expensive as well, and you would have to pay additionally for a cable or something. Back to my Mac Studio. Ever since it arrived, I've been using it as my primary computer to do well pretty much everything from photography to editing, YouTube videos, software development and your everyday tasks such as planning, browsing the web and dealing with emails. But ever since I've been accepted into this incubator called Catapult to develop my custom high-end router that will go very nicely with Apple gear mind you, I've been offered a piece of 3D design software called SolidWorks. And SolidWorks has a problem. Well. I have a problem because of SOLIDWORKS. It only works on Windows, which is not a big deal in itself as I do have a relatively powerful PC, which you can see back here. It's an Intel Core i9-9900X, which is a 10-core CPU, along with a GeForce 2080 Ti and 32 gigs of RAM. It's not the PC that's the problem. You see, up until this point, I've been using two separate inputs on my monitor. One for each of the computers, DisplayPort for the PC and HDMI for the Mac. But now with the piece of work related software also running on the PC, it means I'll have to switch between the two much more frequently, which I won't lie is very annoying if you have to do it several times a day back and forth. This is why I recently started looking into KVM switches. If you're unfamiliar with them, KVM stands for keyboard video mouse and their primary function is reusing the same, well, keyboard, monitor and mouse on two or more computers and they usually come with either HDMI or DisplayPort variants. And because my PC is much more powerful of the two from a GPU perspective and I want my G-Sync experience, I decided to go with the DisplayPort one which meant I had another problem to solve, and that is how to get a DisplayPort signal out of the Mac. Luckily for me, that problem turned out to be way easier to solve than I thought, because all modern Macs come with Thunderbolt ports. And Thunderbolt... And Thunderbolt... And Thunderbolt does carry DisplayPort signal. I only wish I would have thought of that sooner, as the only thing that annoyed me to no end was the fact that the HDMI port on the M1 Mac Studio is only HDMI 2.0 and thus my 1440p ultrawide monitor would only work on 60Hz when connected to Mac. Enter these two devices. You don't need both of them, I just decided to play it on the safe side because their documentation only mentions HDMI and not DisplayPort, so I wasn't sure. This one is called Cable Matters Foldable 8K USB Adapter and for it to work you also need a relatively high quality display port cable, especially if you want to run higher refresh rates and or higher resolutions. There isn't much else to it, you plug it into a Thunderbolt port on the Mac on one side and display port cable on the other and voila, up to 8K 60Hz. But if you don't need portability, I'd actually go with this Cable Matters premium branded USB-C display port cable. It does exactly the same thing, the only difference is that you don't need a separate cable. I do have to point out the build of my particular unit though, 
The first time I unplugged it, this plastic shell around the connector came loose and even if I push it back on, the fact remained that this is poor quality control on the manufacturer's part. I mean, it doesn't impact its performance, works just fine. It is somewhat ironic given the brand name is Cable Matters and the cable has premium in its name. I'll leave the link to both of these products in the description below. Uh, make sure you click that like button on the way out and I'll see you in the next one.